his take on this. But I got to tell you something to start. One deranged lunatic attempted to do something horrible. It does not represent the Democratic Party. It doesn't represent Kamala Harris, even though MAGA right, right-wing Republicans out there would like you to believe that. And while all this stuff is going on in Springfield, Ohio, there were a couple more bomb threats in that city because of the rhetoric that MAGA Republicans are spreading, including J.D. Vance and Donald Trump. I'll get to that and how Donald Trump has been inciting violence since he decided to run for public office. But MAGA Republicans don't seem to have a problem with that. Ryan Wesley Ruff is the suspect who was apprehended yesterday. He's been charged with two counts, including possession of a firearm while a convicted felon and possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial number. How he got his hands on this weapon, I'm not so sure. But what I can tell you, in the state of Florida, thanks to Ron DeSantis and other MAGA Republicans, people are able to get their hands on weapons without a background check. How do we know this? The AK-47 that was used in the attempt to kill Donald Trump is the same kind of weapon that is allowed to be sold to somebody without a background check. Yes, that's right. Today, if I was in Florida and I went into a gun store and I bought an AK-47 legally, they would do a background check on me. But then if I decided to sell it to my neighbor, that neighbor wouldn't have to get a background check. But you won't hear MAGA Republicans talking about that. You'll hear them complaining about the fact that this guy was pro-Ukraine. As if somehow wanting Ukraine to win the war against an evil, murderous regime is a bad thing. It is absurd and it is ridiculous. This is an ongoing investigation. And then there are Republicans out there that want to talk about this unverified photo of this shooter, Ryan Routh, or at least attempted shooter, Ryan Wesley Routh, who allegedly had a Trump Kamala bumper sticker on his truck in Florida, even though he lives in Hawaii. Totally unverified, but yet these same MAGA Republicans don't want to talk about the 20-year-old shooter a couple months ago whose own family in the house he resided in had Donald Trump signs in the front of their house. But you'd never hear MAGA Republicans talk about that. But they want to talk about an unverified photo alleging that this guy had a Trump, or I'm sorry, Biden bumper sticker. Again, completely unverified, just like all the pets and the immigrants that are eating your pets in Springfield, Ohio. And let me remind all of you that the incitement of violence has been going on within Trump and the people around him in his orbit for years. This week is a perfect example of what I am talking about. And the reason why I say that is as we're speaking right now, right now as we are speaking, Springfield, Ohio, is getting bomb threats. They've gotten bomb threats at several schools. They've gotten a bomb threat in the city hall. And events have had to be canceled in that city. Why? Is it because they have an immigration problem there? Is it because of all these legal Haitian immigrants? No, that's not why you're seeing all these bomb threats. Make no mistake about it. The reason why you're seeing and hearing about these bomb threats at schools is because J.D. Vance and Donald Trump on a debate stage continue to double down on the conspiracy theories that have all been unsubstantiated. How do we know this? We know this from the mayor. We know this from the city manager. We know this from the Republican governor. We know this from the police chief. All unsubstantiated claims, no truth to it, that somehow Haitian immigrants are eating your pets. You want to talk about incitement of violence? How would you like it if your kid was at a school where they received a bomb threat? Well, this was J.D. Vance live on CNN over the weekend, continuing to incite violence, lying and doubling down after some of these bomb threats had already happened. Have a listen to this. On September 9th, you amplified what you said yourself were rumors about Haitian migrants eating pets. Donald Trump then claimed those were facts and he repeated them to 67 million people on the debate stage this past week. In Springfield yesterday, two hospitals went into lockdown after police were alerted to a bomb threat. On Friday, two elementary schools, one middle school were evacuated. Thursday, an elementary school was also evacuated and Springfield City Hall had to evacuate due to a bomb threat made by someone who said they were concerned about immigration. 
These false claims are endangering your constituents. Do you regret your words? Well, Margaret, first of all, we condemn all violence and condemn all threats of violence. I want whoever made these threats to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. But we don't believe, Margaret, in a heckler's veto in this country. You can condemn violence on the one hand while also saying that there have been terrible problems caused by Kamala Harris's open border in Springfield. Now, you said that these are false rumors. Well, I've heard about a dozen things from my constituents in Springfield, Ohio. Ten of them are verifiable and confirmable. A couple of them we have direct firsthand accounts of, for example, migrants abducting geese at the local park and slaughtering them and eating them. Now, maybe all of these constituents are lying to me, but I would appreciate if the American media showed up and did some real investigation rather than amplifying the worst people in the world. Why is somebody yeah. calling it a bomb threat, Margaret? It's because they want attention. I think that we should ignore these ridiculous psychopaths who are threatening violence on a small Ohio town and focus on the fact that we have a vice president who's not doing her job in protecting that small Ohio town. Unbelievably ridiculous and tone deaf. According to J.D. Vance, he's got a dozen things, I'm going by his words now, that he heard. That would be like me saying, I got a dozen phone calls today that claim that you're sexually assaulting couches. So would I go on the air? and make this a serious story if I had a huge platform like you do? No, I wouldn't, because it would be irresponsible. Let me repeat. He says, verifiable information. How is it verifiable when people call your office and the police chief says it's not true? The mayor says it's not true. The city manager says it not, it's not true. The governor says it's not true. But he just wants to ignore a bomb threat? How would you feel if your kids were at a school and you had a politician uh, say, well, that bomb threat, let's just ignore it. No, you'd be concerned for your child's safety. But this guy wants to start rumors about alleged Haitian immigrants that are eating your pets. It's a lie. It's a conspiracy theory. It's not true. I don't want to hear you Trump supporters out there talking about, oh, well, you're inciting, you know, Democrats are inciting violence, and that's why this happened. No, let me be very clear. A 20-year-old Republican a couple months ago tried to kill the former president. Horrible. I would never condone it. We have a guy who actually, on his social media postings, says that he was a Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy supporter. So this whole idea that he's some sort of lunatic liberal is a lie. It's not true. You want to talk about inciting violence, which is something that Donald Trump has been doing for years? I'd like to rough that guy up. You rough that guy up, I'll pay his legal bills. I'd like to punch that guy in the face. I don't hear, let me tell you something, Democrats won't be doing this today or tomorrow, or the next day. This crazed lunatic who tried to kill Donald Trump, they won't be calling him a patriot. They won't be calling him a hostage as he sits in a jail cell today. No, but the people that physically assaulted police officers on January 6th, Donald Trump is called patriots and hostages. The far right have looked up to these people as heroes. You won't hear one prominent Democrat in office today talking about this guy Roth and calling him a hero, calling him a hostage, calling him a patriot. Those are the words of Donald Trump. Oh, you think I'm delusional? You can call into this show and tell me why you think I'm delusional at 702-221-7283. You think I'm delusional, but I have some audio to play for you. If you want to talk about inciting violence, this was the day after Paul Pelosi was bludgeoned with a hammer. This was the day after Paul Pelosi almost died at the hands of a right-wing white supremacist lunatic. This is Donald Trump in his own words, mocking the Paul Pelosi attack. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. Yeah, they're all laughing. It's funny, right? Here's a guy who was almost killed, bludgeoned in the head with a hammer, and he's making jokes about the wall around her house. What would happen if Joe Biden did that today? Geez, I guess the security around the golf course didn't work too well, huh? And then he smiled.
What would Republicans say about that? So you Republicans have no ground to stand on. You're all a bunch of hypocrites. Donald Trump has been inciting violence since he got into office, even before he got into office. But yet we're supposed to sit here and listen to you guys. We're supposed to sit here and listen to you. There is no comparison. Not one prominent Democrat has joked about this assassination. Not one prominent Democrat in office has called him a hostage or a patriot. You reap what you sow. I don't condone this violence. I don't condone any violence of anybody as much as I might despise Donald Trump. One deranged lunatic who was a Nikki Haley supporter does not represent the entire Democratic Party. It doesn't represent anybody in office. It doesn't represent anybody else in this country. And I will also share that hours, hours after this attempted assassination of Donald Trump, he was campaigning off of it for funds, asking for money. Yes, that's right. That's exactly what he was doing. He also shared an article over the weekend attacking Jewish people as blind, deaf, and very dumb. But that's not inciting violence at all, is it? Attacking a group of religious people in this country because some of them might not support you? And how did this guy get his hands on an AK-47? How did that happen? Well, Ron DeSantis in the state of Florida makes it much easier for criminals to get their hands on guns. How? If you buy an AK-47 at a store with a background check, you could sell it to somebody and they don't have to get a background check. Ron DeSantis has made it easier in the state of Florida for crazy lunatics like this guy to get his hand on an AK-47. Make no mistake about it. And meanwhile, while the Proud Boys are marching in Springfield, Ohio, J.D. Vance and Donald Trump and all these right-wing turds out there refuse to apologize for their lies and rhetoric. Now, we have learned that this was a last-minute scheduling thing for Donald Trump to play golf, even though the guy seems to play golf every day. It's an ongoing investigation. We don't know how this guy knew. I'm sure the investigation will be able to prove that, and I'm not going to entertain conspiracy theories on this show. This 58-year-old man was a Vivek Ramaswamy, Nikki Haley supporter. But you won't hear Democrats say this is a fact of life, will you? The same statements that J.D. Vance made a day after the school shooting took place last week. It shouldn't be a fact of life. School shooting shouldn't be a fact of life. And attempted assassination shouldn't be a part of life. And I would never use that language on this show. It's a joke. And you MAGA Republicans out there that want to blame Democrats for another attempted assassination of Donald Trump, you might want to sit this one out because the guy that you support has done nothing but incite violence since he stepped into office. I could bring you January 6th, the statements he made about punching somebody in the face at his rally or rough that guy up and I'll pay your legal bills, joking about the Paul Pelosi hammer attack. The list goes on and on. Go ahead and find me one prominent Democrat in office today, in your opinion, that has joked about this assassination. Find me one Democrat in office today that would call this guy a hostage or a patriot. You can't. You guys have absolutely no credibility. And go ahead and sit this one out and continue to retweet Laura Loomer. The number to call if you want to be a part of the conversation is 702-221-7283. And again, that number, 